Hi guys and girls, it's Ben O'Hanlon. I've been busy hiring people into the community team. It's been a tremendous month, a lot of activity. I've got with me Matthew, who's been working with me shoulder to shoulder. Do you want to give us a quick overview of what you've been working on, Matthew? So uh, two main things that have been uh, in my crosshairs recently have been the Atala Prison Pioneers course, uh, launching that with the Atala Prison team and the education team. It's been really amazing to see all of the collaboration and the excitement around um, centralized digital identity um, and the Atala Prism product that uh, the Atala team has been working on so hard for so long. So uh, it's really amazing to see that come to fruition in this sort of open source course style that we've had with uh, the Buddhist pioneers, seeing that move over into Atala Prism. Uh, in addition to that, we've also been focused on um, connecting with and understanding uh, all of the amazing DAP projects in the ecosystem that have been exploding, that you guys have been adding to the Central Cardano list, um, and that have you know really been just making their own place for themselves in the ecosystem. It's been really amazing to see. So we've been connecting with those guys. You know, I've had calls with people like Cardano Cube, who gave me some great insight into like what people are searching for. Um, like Matthew says, you know, the excellent work that Neve started with Essential Cardano is now a repository that you can submit um, your project or projects that you think that we should be aware of too. Um, and then the background context that Matthew touched on is all of these calls are happening between these DAP projects and our team to try and sort of line up resources and, and um, you know, discussions where they're needed. Um, on top of that, you know, I'm in calls with uh, IOG um, explaining what the feedback is around those DAPs. So it's really, really, really a busy environment right now. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, and I, I wanted to touch also on, you know, this has been a, a theme recently that uh, that Cardano is, you know, the protocol of the stakeholders. It's not uh, just input outputs, um, you know, product here. It's this, it, the community owns it, the ecosystem owns it. And so this, um, you know, makes it really important for us to cultivate closely those relationships. And so uh, one thing that I wanted to do is connect with the uh, some of the key DAP projects that we've been talking with, um, who we see as really um, strengthening the future of Cardano, who are excited to launch um, fully on mainnet. So I caught up with some of them. Let's head over. Um, we've got a cross section here of uh, the many, many DAP projects that we've been working with over the past weeks and months. And we're really excited to give you guys some insight into their process as they bring um, their amazing DAP projects to market on Cardano. So with that said, let's jump in. So what is your project's mission and how is it different from other DAP projects in this category in the market? Yeah, so our project is Ardana. And our mission really is to build a decentralized stablecoin ecosystem within Cardano. Um, and that's really to focus on stable value through stable coins, but actually also providing the infrastructure for stable coins to be exchanged between each other in a highly capital efficient manner. So within DeFi, um, there are certain key primitives and protocols that are necessary for it to succeed and flourish and for the markets to be efficient. Um, and within those different sectors or industries, we like to call them, whether it's decentralized exchanges or lending and borrowing protocols, or even on the infrastructural side of things like um, oracles, another sector would be stable coins. And that's both stable coins themselves and the infrastructure to trade between them. So we will be providing a stable coin, um, which is backed by on-chain Cardano native assets, and that would be ADA itself. So the stable coin um, isn't backed by fiat dollars in a centralized authority um, or custodial account. It's actually backed by ADA in smart contracts in a decentralized permissionless way. Um, and it's an over collateralized stable coin model. So there's this extra buffer and assurance of stability um, that's built into the stable coin. And then the other side of the stable coin ecosystem is the decentralized exchange, 
which is a special purpose exchange. It's a stable swap exchange. So this would be the most highly capital efficient way to swap between stable coins or stable assets, which are trading at the same price against each other. So it's really providing a stable coin and providing highly capital efficient transfer rails between stable coins. And then the long-term vision um, and our mission is really to leverage these two pillars and tackle decentralized foreign exchange in a viable manner where the stablecoin vaults will actually be able to mint different currency stable coins. And the decentralized exchange would facilitate the transfer between those stable coins. And that would enable a decentralized foreign exchange system where we can provide that facility to anyone at any time um, in a very competitive rates compared to what they would experience in the traditional market. So it's really providing stable coin value and stable coin infrastructure, but also providing a decentralized foreign exchange system that's open to everyone. I'm one of the co-founders, there's three of us at Ada Handle. Um, and Ada Handle, the entire mission of it is to make Cardano addresses easy um, for users. So right now, users get you know that long cryptographic hash for their address that can change or it cannot change depending on you know whether or not you're reusing that address or getting a new one. Um, and we just felt like uh, the user experience is fairly terrible and it's a high barrier to entry for the masses, you know? Um, so we were like, hey, let's create simple custom addresses. And so the idea being that you just type in, you know, if it's available, for instance, it would be similar to like a Twitter username. Um, so that's kind of the mission is to simplify and reduce the barrier to entry uh, for the Cardano space. I think Ada Handle is a little bit different than, so there's, you know, if we look at Ethereum, there's uh, ENS, for instance, that's the Ethereum naming service. That's probably the closest sibling uh, in terms of prod products uh, in the space. And I think Ada Handle separates itself in that we, we emphasize simplicity over complexity. Um, we, go, we go down to like the very base level of like, we're literally custom names uh, for an address that are uh, tied to a wallet. So you can, you can look at that as like identity. It could be identity. Um, it could be a lot of other things like just a payment address, right? Um, we don't necessarily, we actually intentionally at the beginning of this, uh, straight away from the domain terminology, because even from a usability standpoint, that creates a lot of connotations. You get people, they, they go buy their domain and then they're like, why can't I go to this website? Or what does this do? You know, like I remember trying to buy unstoppable domains on Ethereum and there was like five different steps that I had to do to buy this domain because what happens in Ethereum and, and you know, we could get into this later, but what happens in Ethereum is that it's all in a smart contract. So you have to go through like several steps in order to actually attain this and set up the routing and all that type of stuff. And Ada Handle specifically, we were like, let's make this as simple as possible. So Ada Handle is literally just an NFT, it has some metadata uh, because of the, you know, technical workings of Cardano. Um, it can be queried instantly in terms of like its location because it's a native asset. And so we actually don't embed the address into the NFT. We embed meta metadata about that address um, and that's up to the user. So Liquid Finance is our DeFi lending protocol being built on Cardano blockchain right now. Um, I think the mission is to create capital efficient lending products and solutions that any user can access from anywhere around the globe at any time. Um, I think part of building on Cardano is deterministic and secure transactions. And that ties in and feeds into the mission of how do you deploy a liquidity market at a global scale that can be accessed with 100% on time and um, autonomous interest rates to uniformly distribute the lending and the borrowing supply rates in the market. Um, an ability to create an equal marketplace of sorts where it doesn't matter how much capital you're bringing uh, to either side of the market, the interest rates are being determined by an algorithm that every user, large or small, um, can benefit from and tap into all, all at the same time, essentially. And yeah, I think Liquid is taking a more capital efficient route to building some of our products. It ties into our liquidation system. It ties into you know how we're building um, just market reserves and things to backstop our system um, in terms of collateral ratios and factors. Really, any lending protocol is a matter of loan to value ratios and building these and constructing these with design patterns 
that can secure your system during times of um, you know collateral fallouts and, and price drops. These things are really critical to building any secure lending protocol. And I think Liquid has taken um, a really uh, first principles approach to specking out our system, um, to building it, you know, really from the models that we started with, uh, you know, last summer, me and Florian together. So, yeah, I think that's what, you know, differentiates. We're not just a fork of a, you know, another protocol that exists on a different blockchain. We really have built ground up um, a UTXO lending marketplace uh, for all users. We're an Oracle and our name is Charlie three. That's a kind of play on Charles's name as well as we have three founders. So, that's where we came up with that one. Um, and as you know, like we said, we're an Oracle service, which means we're taking off-chain data and being able to have it readable by uh, the Cardano chain because we are built specifically for Cardano, which means Haskell code. So you ask why and how we're different. Um, that's our, our main difference is we are the only, as far as I know, or at least one of um, third-party Oracles in the system that are built completely Haskell native uh, ready to serve the Cardano ecosystem fully directly. Uh, and I think that that's a really major thing as far as the ecosystem goes and connecting everybody is to be built Haskell native. So we don't have to worry about any kind of port overs or potential code problems or anything. It means we can also work directly with all of the other projects that are Haskell native. So I think that gives us the, the biggest boost up, whereas there's other things like first party oracles or, uh, Oracles that are off chain that are attending to attempting to come in potentially with EVM compatibility, but with ours, uh, we're built right right for the chain, right for Cardano, and and I think that's very exciting uh, for us to be able to serve the ecosystem that way. We're Occamex. Uh, we're a decentralized exchange built for the Cardano ecosystem. We're backed by IOHK through the C Fund and Emergo. Um, and our mission is to bring a vast amount of liquidity to new projects building on Cardano. In terms of how we're different from other DEXs, uh, like I said there, we have some official links with official Cardano entities. Um, and also we're one of the first uh, DEXs that have, you know, sort of really put some efforts into solving the concurrency issue on Cardano. We're now exploring some of the issues around block size limits. We're hoping to go public with a public beta very soon. Uh, let me start by sharing a small personal story. So my background is in traditional finance. And I used to build sophisticated trading tools for large players. Every day when I went to work, it was killing me. I was spending my days building investment tools only available to the wealthy elite. The better I did my job, the further I centralized the wealth in fewer hands. So this is how the idea for Maladex was born. Uh, and the Maladex mission is to bring sophisticated investment tools only available to the financial elite, to everyone, enabling people to have the same investment benefits. Uh, and to put it concisely, our mission is to accelerate the world's transition to a fair and efficient financial system for everyone. What are the advantages of building on Cardano in particular? Cardano is um, an interesting blockchain um, in its development. It's taken a different approach to the other projects we've seen in the space, and albeit slower, um, academic peer-reviewed approach so building on something where it's its foundations are strong right from the consensus mechanism itself all the way up to the smart contract language Plutus being based in Haskell a functional programming language just gives developers um, and us a lot more assurances in terms of security and correctness that you wouldn't get on other chains so we really do think this is going to pay dividends in the long run for Cardano when people can have those assurances when they build on this chain that it's going to do exactly what it's meant to do. And they'll have those same assurances with the applications building on top of Cardano because of you know, security. And then the added benefit, and this is the big trilemma in the space of decentralization, scalability and security. Cardano is actually able to maintain that security whilst still having scalability built in and still being decentralized and having a strong community backing and underpinning that through the projects, the community members and the state pool operators as well. It's a vibrant ecosystem and it's underpinned by strong technology. So it made sense for us to build where the strongest technology is and where the strongest community is. 
there's two things that make an ecosystem preferable to a different ecosystem. One of that is social, so the community around uh, that ecosystem, and that's this is particularly super important with open source software. And then the other one is like the actual technical underpinnings of how does it make it easier to develop on, or does it have certain security guarantees or, or whatever it might be. Um, Cardano is an obvious one uh, from a community standpoint. It, it has such a strong community. Actually, like my background actually comes from WordPress, which is one of the largest open source projects on the internet. Um, powers like, I think it's right now, it's over 40% of the web. Um, and what made WordPress ingrained in the web was the super strong community, partially because it was built around blogs, right? Like community. And when I came to Cardano, this was like a very obvious similarity. It made it super easy to get into it um, because there's just a ton of people here who are passionate about Cardano. Um, so that's one that made it like, if we ever had to get into anything, uh, if we had to talk to developers, we knew that there was gonna be a community around these projects. I also knew that um, the community would build up the ecosystem in terms of tooling and, and other protocols that we could build on top of. Because uh, whenever you have a vibrant community, people just kind of spring up their own projects um, and you can kind of leverage each other's success in that way. In terms of the technical reasons why we picked Cardano, I, I would say that there's trade-offs, right? Like for instance, with Ethereum, there's it's account-based. It's a little easier to reason about uh, account balances and stuff like that. But um, Cardano has a, a really uh, unique uh, model with the UTXO where it it aligns very, very nicely with functional programming paradigms. And for me personally, I come from like a TypeScript functional pro programming background. Um, so the the jump to kind of having that paradigm when working with accounts, when I'm working with transactions, when I can bundle all these things together and have a single output. These were all like natural things that made it easy to reason about. Granted, there's a learning curve there uh, in terms of how your brain thinks, uh, but the security guarantees of it and the cleanness of it and like the predictability of it is really nice. Yeah, I think Cardano has the power with the state pool operators, with the amount of decentralization in terms of the distribution of ADA, the staking of the asset today, um, to deploy not only DeFi protocols in a decentralized, secure manner, but also to have the, the technical infrastructure needed. When you look at examples like Sunday Swap using stateful operators in their scooper model, and for you know, all of these other DeFi protocols using stateful operators for their ISOs, um, these things are really just the beginning of a, a really broader movement of stateful operators as a service. And, you know, Liquid has some plans for integrating stateful operators with Oracles and, you know, using Cardano's deterministic transactions throughout our entire protocol, you know, both on um, the way we mint our tokens and our Q tokens, which are the, the interest bearing tokens in Liquid's system, um, to the way we handle, um, you know, the Oracle system and the governance system and the ability to update and change some of the parameters in our contract. So through and through, the Cardano blockchain gives us the level of extensibility um, with the, you know, composability that you're going to see um, quickly get built out when you see projects like Liquid integrating with Sunday, integrating with, you know, um, Ardana and things like that. So I definitely think, you know, in terms of what Cardano gives us, it's, it's more than just deterministic and secure low cost transactions. It's even more than just the corpus of state pools that we built out and that technical base um, of being able to be true service providers in the Cardano ecosystem. It's the Cardano community, right? That's really what the core of all of this comes down to. It's the people who wake up every single day and build um, NFTs, DeFi, different dApps um, in, in identity space on top of the Cardano blockchain and they do it with joy and passion. Um, you know, both the LQ community that we've managed to build since last summer and also just really the Catalyst community and um, trusting and voting our team to actually get the funds needed to bootstrap the Liquid Protocol. This has been, you know, massive and instrumental in our development, of course. So I think the, the, the community in Cardano is really what separates, um, you know, projects like Liquid and other DeFi protocols being built on top of the blockchain um, from similar equivalents on other chains. Well, for an Oracle service such as Charlie 3, uh, I think it's it's a really unique position for us to be in in that we can be there at the start of the 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 kind of Cardano community and the, the entire ecosystem here uh, that allows us to to really be there, customize our solution specifically for the projects in the community, uh, and also for the the code base that is you know available in Cardano. Cardano is slightly different than than other um, blockchains, so. 
Uh, and, and I think the biggest advantage for us is that we're able to kind of be there and organically grow together with the community and all the other projects. So that's that's a big one. Uh, we also uh, like the, the 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 way the the community is overall. It's very innovative, uh, which I think is kind of um, something that comes out of the way Cardano is. The Card Cardano uh, technology is innovative in itself, and I think that kind of inspires the community to uh, to do things in a new way as well, similar to the way Cardano is being being built. I think that the key advantage of building for Cardano is definitely, and, and this is for DeFi as well, for the whole DeFi ecosystem on Cardano, is the cost efficiency of transactions. Uh, so we recently shifted and made it available for users to contribute to IDOs in Binance Smart Chain. Uh, but this is just a stepping stone, really. We're, we're keen to get away from the Ethereum uh, gas costs, which are obviously sometimes they're higher than a user can contribute to uh, the IDO itself. Um, and if we're going to make DeFi truly decentralized and truly inclusive, um, we need to be fully aware that not every user can spend like a couple of hundred dollars on gas. If we're going to involve people in emerging economies, uh, we need it to be as cheap as possible, as seamless as possible. And in my eyes, uh, Cardano is one of the only blockchains that can actually do that. So we've got these transactions that are a fraction of the cost at the same speed. Um, and I'm really excited to see like all of the new users that come into DeFi because Cardano enables them to participate uh, fairly, transparently and, and cost effectively. Maladex was idea long uh, in uh, being in the seed. So back in 2017, when I first came with the idea of Maladex protocol, I couldn't find a suitable blockchain to build it on. Uh, so I left where it was in a nice idea box. Uh, but two years later, uh, in 2019, uh, when I was attending Haskell conference, I talked to Phil Wadler, uh, you know, like the very distinguished professor who created Haskell, uh, legend in the um, programming language field, and then senior fellow, uh, re senior research fellow at AOHK, uh, from whom, by the way, I've studied uh, Haskell and formal verification in Edinburgh. Uh, so Phil. Uh, introduced me to Cardano, uh, the blockchain that addresses the fundamental issues uh, that actually enable Maladex to come alive. And, you know, uh, turns out, you know, like the solution was there. Uh, and let me talk about the uh, defining characteristics that uh, make Cardano the solution to building Maladex protocol. So the first of them is uh, the fact that's composed of EUTXOs, uh, extended unspent transaction outputs. And in simple terms, it means that any information that you need to process a transaction is contained within those outputs. And we can think of those outputs as simple boxes to store things. And you don't need to look at the global state. You don't need to line in a queue. Uh, you simply take those EUTXOs you need and process the transaction. And this means you can actually massively parallelize the protocol by running multiple things at once. And this is just the first thing. Second, uh, Cardano's superpower, and actually last talk about, is off-chain code execution and on-chain code validation. Paladex vision is to rewrite the code powering the world's financial system. That's a lot of transactions going every second. That's a ton of code. To do that, we need to be able to process thousands and millions of complex contracts and financial instruments in a decentralized manner. And Cardano actually enables us to process those complex contracts off-chain in an efficient manner, and we only submit proofs to on-chain validators, making it both highly performant and secure. So what's submitted onto Cardano blockchain are simple, uh, low-memory proofs, which keep nodes lightweight and efficient. And last but not least, Cardano, with its uh, Hydra heads, will enable to increase the throughput and decrease the execution costs. And if you actually work in the traditional finance, the best strategy can be completely broken apart if your execution costs are not right. And those are the three reasons why no other blockchain would work for the Maldix protocol. So how is it all going at this stage? Um, were you guys in the process of bringing your project to market? We've been building for uh, just coming up to a year now. We started in January 
And in terms of progression, we're around 95% of the way through our development. So we've already brought in third party auditors who are looking over um, the code as we finalize things. And then we'll do a code freeze and do the final um, overarching audit as well. So in terms of timelines, we're really a few weeks away from completion and also completion in, in terms of being able to launch directly on Cardano mainnet. So we are targeting a January launch um, and that will be both the stable coin and the decentralized exchange, which is called Dana Swap. They'll both be launching on Cardano mainnet in January. It's kind of an interesting story. I, I won't get too much into the details. Um, Ada Handle actually originally started as a site project. Uh, I, I went to one of my partners, Conrad, and I was like, hey, dude, you want to build this for like, it's, it'll take us like three weeks. I actually, I think the first thing I said to him, it'll take us a weekend. We can build this in a weekend. Um, and then after that, it was like, ah, oh, it'll take three weeks. And now it's been two and a half months, right? <laughs> so we actually, we, we did a few private uh, test net, um, but they were limited in scope of their load, uh, like the amount of people involved. And so then we did a actual main net launch on November 6th um, and pretty quickly ran into scaling problems and we were, and it was on the one hand, it was really nice because it, the scaling problem happened at the very entrance of the portal. And so we actually didn't have to deal with refunds. Nobody lost any money. Um, we actually didn't mint a single handle. Um, so on the one hand, it was really nice. On the other hand, it was very frustrating as a developer. Cause I was like, man, you didn't even get to see like the rest of the pipeline. So we went back to the drawing board and we we're like, what happened on this day? Um, and we brought on some additional engineers because uh, at this point, none of us had slept and it was hard to reason about what was going on. And uh, we pretty quickly found a fix. We did another testnet launch. Everything worked pretty smoothly, uh, minus like some like UX uh, things that we're working on and, and just some guarantees um, and then making our minting process faster. So th the stage at where we're at right now is uh, we probably have like one more testnet that we're going to do. And if that goes well, we're off to another mainnet launch, hopefully within a week, but you know, no promises at this point because it's turned into, you know, such a bigger project. So right now, Liquid V1 is around feature complete. Um, there are some refactors happening on some of the market contracts, um, mainly to handle script size and UTXO contention. Um, integration with PAB for Liquid setup is, is handling nicely and the devs have a pathway to doing end-to-end -end, uh, browser wallets transactions. So having those integrations with NAMI and, you know, Flint and CC Wallet and all the others, um, those things are quickly coming into play here for us and being able to just, um, you know, show the community, you know, the progress that we've made since our last funding round and um, the updates that we've had, both on the completion of on-chain features, which we'll be entering audit shortly, um, but also just in the entire setup of governance, um, we have a governance module that, you know, um, Sunday Swap is actually going to deploy in their protocol on mainnet shortly here. And uh, we'll be having our own team internally audit those contracts, as well as all of the liquid contracts, which have gone through testing and property based testing with quick check and are getting ready for the process of an external audit. Um, you, you hit on that, Matthew, and the external audit, we have, you know, Tweeg lined up to work on that. And you know, Tweeg is a Haskell development shop, and they've done several audits similar to this for, for Plutus DeFi protocols already. Um, we really want to make sure that when we do enter that tweak audit, uh, we have 100% completion in terms of our on-chain feature code, in terms of our performance optimizations that we're going to make to handle with you know UTXO contention and script size and these things. And all of that is complete in terms of the commit hash that we enter the audit with and the commit hash that we'll go live with on mainnet. Um, and you know that, that really kind of um, getting it done right the first time um, is really something that is an approach that we've had, you know, an ethos almost for Liquid Labs since day one and making sure that we're building, you know, secure, um, continuous improvement and testing into our entire development model is something that we've embraced since day one. And while it's taken a little bit longer to get here than we've, uh, you know, hoped and imagined, um, things really are coming into place nicely. And we're very confident in the security underpinning our models, underpinning our interest rates, um, underpinning, you know, the Oracle system that we've gone with in Liquid. And we're excited to share more of this with the community. You know, we built out a UTXO spec. We built out a technical high-level design spec. And these things will be shared with the external auditors. And, you know, they've been obviously going um, through massive refinements and, and internal audits and testing leading up to this moment. So, so yeah, we're definitely, um, you know, really looking forward to this. 
Yeah, so we've been working pretty hard since our launch in April to make sure that this is proper Haskell native and trustable by the community. So uh, we paired up with an IOHK kind of pilot certification um, that uh, I'm not sure if there's others involved, but uh, we are. We just wrapped up our audit with them, so we're just getting the official report out right now, I think, Jonas, right? Um, and so that'll be really great uh, if you know, we're coming to the beginning of the launch here with, with Cardano. So yeah, Certic audit uh, completed. And I think the process went pretty well. There wasn't a lot of concerns and that was a pretty ex exciting for us, I think. Um, and I think we're, we're partnered up with a couple other projects at the moment that we're testing out and beginning our initial integrations uh, with them, you know, th with the lack of PAB, but uh, using what's currently available to be as ready as possible for when everything goes live. Uh, to serve the ecosystem and our partners uh, as soon as possible. So I think that that's kind of our biggest thing. Um, and then as soon as those initial price projects and uh, price feeds are, are set up and, and integrated with the system, we'll be moving on to other features such as our uh, VRF and potential NFT databases that we have coming up. So pretty excited uh, to get the official certification done and working with the IOHK to manage that. We recently released our roadmap on our London page. Um, so we're pretty much still in phase one, which is building out the core components. Uh, but phase one also includes a two month public beta phase. So that's going to be our next major milestone. We're going to move to public beta whereby we'll invite the Cardano community to come and test our components that we've built. Um, you know, use our, our decks in real time. Um, you can actually use it for swaps, although we are still, you know, in that beta phase where we're improving and reiterating on certain features. In terms of audits, we're already talking to a number of um, Plutus auditors and, and Haskell auditors. Um, obviously, they're they're pretty rare creatures in the space still. So um, it's, you know, like a not the fastest process compared to getting audits on, um, say, Solidity smart contracts. But we're focusing on a minimal, uh, minimal lovable product. So we really want something that's going to be robust. Uh, it's going to be easy to use. So if that takes a little longer and takes us a little longer to move through public beta and get all the audits in place, but then the trade-off is massively increased utility and security, then that's something we're, we're willing to do. So we're going to bring a product that's fully audited and, you know, has gone through extensive testing. So those are the next major steps for us. Um, and hopefully our public beta will be here in, you know, the late half of Q4, early half of Q1, 2022. Maladex is extremely difficult protocol to build. Uh, so we are still in the process of developing uh, V1. Uh, right now we are heads down coding and we expect less uh, complex projects to release before us. But we are fine with that because our mission is to build solutions that solve the fundamental issues in DeFi and traditional finance. So we have some really tough problems uh, yet to solve. And uh, related to audits, we plan to attain the availability, the available security certifications. So, you know, like Cardano, sorry, Cardano or IOG introduced this concept of three levels of certification. So we have automated tooling, so code scanning, in-depth audit by third party and the formal verification. And uh, we are in the process of planning those audits with multiple companies and we plan to attain all the three levels. After launch, what is the next critical step in your roadmap? Um, how does your project develop from here? After launch, uh, it's really gonna fall into two sides. We'll have the V2 um, development and that's both the stable coin adding more functionality to that, and then also the decentralized exchange, really building out the features and actually creating more links between the protocols so they're not two standalone things underpinned by our single token, Dana. It will actually be you know, interconnected protocols where its features can be leveraged together. So that's gonna be one half of our progression after launch. The other half of the progression is really going to be that push towards building in the functionality for foreign exchange, adding in the capabilities to both mint different currency stable coins, ensure that those different currency stable coins can be secure, depending on how much liquidity um, is provided for those. And then also building in the um, different liquidity pools on the decentralized exchange 
that's more focused on swapping from one currency to another and then progressing further. And this is really the beginning of the push into the traditional space where we bring in the fiat on ramps and off ramps into those different currencies where it can be a system that can exist outside of blockchain and cryptocurrency and actually be a part of you know, the real world. And um, so, yeah. After launch, launch is a beta launch. So it's capped at 15,000 handles um, and then we turn it off. And this is mostly to give us a good like size of handles to improve on things and to iterate on things uh, without, because our minting machine is going to be perpetual. You're always going to be able to create a handle. Um, so the beta sale is going to uh, basically get us to stage one. Um, and at that point, we're going to close it down. Um, we're going to rebuild our minting engine to be, to utilize smart contracts. So decentralize the minting process. Um, after that, we're going to work pretty heavily with our partners throughout the ecosystem to actually get that the handle standard in integrated into their dApps. Um, and we have several of those. Uh, another one is going to be documenting the handle standard and our protocol in more in depth, um, getting out like a white paper, getting out um, kind of how the, the community should use the handle standard. And then another one we're going to be working on is kind of generating a sustainable reoccurring revenue model. Some of that is through royalties. So like we do have a 2% two, a 2 royalty on this, on, on the handle standard for secondary market sales. Um, but we're also looking into like, what other products can we build on top of this that uh, can fund the development? What, what kind of APIs can we release to make it easy for developers to work with the handle standard and so forth? And then this all leads up to eventually finalizing a treasury system to kind of fund the sustainability of ADA handle and, and moving it to a DAO is the, the long-term goal. So I think uh, one of the most critical uh, part, but also the most interesting one will be to, to deploy the DAO we want to be a decentralized protocol where actually uh, all of the LQ token will be earned by using the protocol, either supplying or lending um, assets. Uh, we want to engage with the community because uh, this is, I think, the future of Liquid. So therefore, it will be the most critical part uh, to vote on all of these uh, market parameters we have, also to decide how we want to, to use uh, the, the treasury, how we want uh, to set the parameters for, for the market reserve, if we want to give staking reward, etc. Of course, also we want to um, develop a, a lot of new features. We have really a, a catalog of, of ideas we want to implement. Uh, one of them will be to build synergies with uh, Liquid X, which will be um, a protocol that is allows the users to mint stablecoin based on ADA brought as collateral. Um, we want also in the future, but uh, integration maybe uh, with DEX um, and also to partner with other protocols. Since Charlie 3 is an Oracle service, uh, we will basically have to be constantly evolving new services. I don't think there will be much time at all for our developers to, to relax. Uh, we will be going on constantly. Uh, one of the big features that will be coming up is uh, the on-chain randomness, uh, where uh, we're taking randomness off chain and we're putting it onto the, the blockchain. Uh, it seems like it would be easy to do this uh, properly on chain, but it's actually rather complicated. And it's also something that is very important. It's used in many places where you might not imagine it's used, such as uh, minting NFTs and, and similar things. So it's it's definitely something that we want to take take to the chain as soon as possible. Uh, another important feature that we will be adding uh, is also going to be some sort of a request response kind of Oracle service uh, for the kinds of data where you have maybe certain parameters or you have some, some data that you need at a specific time, but you don't really know in advance what the parameter is or, or what the time will be. Uh, so that's a, a crucial feature that I think we will be adding uh, very shortly. Probably the next major, um, you know, event that will happen for our Occamex ecosystem after we've moved past public beta is going to be bringing all the liquidity for the projects uh, that we host on onto our decks. So we're also we also have a launchpad called Occam Razor, and uh, we offer liquidity mining as a service for all of the projects that come through our launchpad. Um, so it's going to be an, an awesome way for Cardano projects to raise funds and then find instant secondary market trading on Occamex. So they can come through Occam Razor, um, launch pool on Occamex with a Cardano native token, 
Uh, Cardano users can provide liquidity in ADA, and we'll have this uh, huge liquidity ecosystem running on Occamex. So that for us is the next major milestone, bringing, making all of these projects that launch with us, issue a Cardano native token, and then providing the infrastructure that will let them find liquidity against ADA. Um, so we're really excited for that. And that's really going to kick off Cardano's DeFi ecosystem. For V1 of the Mondex protocol, we aim to solve fundamental issues with DeFi, 1.0, as we outlined in the white paper, and those are improve capital efficiency, decrease important loss, and introduce automated and composable contracts, which we call programmable swaps. For uh, version two, we focus on increasing efficiency with fast and cheap uh, Hydra head transactions, and we will add additional financial products, such as indexes, synthetics, options, and extends programmable swap capabilities. We expect version two to be a boss level fight, making uh, DeFi offering more attractive than decentralized exchanges. How do you see your projects vertical developing on Cardano over the next few years uh, and into the longer term? And what problems do you, you feel that your project is uniquely able to address? DeFi on Cardano, um, we think that it's going to uh, you know, take time to grow. Um, this is a multi-month, multi-year process in the core protocols, the foundational ones being built, um, and then more protocols building on top of those. So um, this concept of composability and interoperability between protocols is important in any DeFi landscape. So it's really about establishing the core foundations, and we feel that our protocol, the stablecoin and the stable swap decks is a part of that enables other applications to actually come in, build on top of that and create new interesting protocols on top of that. So we think it's going to be a multi-phase process of the initial DEXs and money markets and stable coins coming to life. And then the next phase would be the progression of those um, more interesting, perhaps more quirky applications being built on top of that. And that will progress forward in the coming years. The beauty of Ada Handle is that it's simple. Um, it's also that it's extendable. So the way that we've built the, the metadata structure is you can, you can add on top of a handle if you want to. Um, and we'll do that, you know, that'll be like in a roadmap, the technical explanations as to why. But so it's simple and it's extendable. So the way I see it um, kind of playing out is protocols actually utilizing handle to augment their own protocols. Um, a good example is like one of our, our partners is Sunday Swap. And we've talked about, you know, the ADA handle being integrated into their UI so that users can see their handle when they're interacting with the DAP, right? But Sunday Swap could take that a step further and, and augment a handle, for instance, with extra metadata that maybe their users would want associated with that handle. Um, so there's a lot of things that can kind of happen in the ecosystem around ADA handle, um, and it doesn't necessarily uh, force anybody to use it in a certain way, which is really cool. And, and I'm honestly just really excited to see what the community does with the handle standard and how, how we uh, compose on top of it to create even better things. I think the, the next generation of uh, lending protocol on DeFi will integrate digital ID. I think that Cardano is very well placed uh, with its Atala program to be able really to, to bank the unbank people um, also, uh, on my previous background, you know, I used to work as a financial and regulatory auditor for, for banks in Switzerland. I also uh, build banking system uh, in Switzerland. So I know exactly how to, to interface the digital ID to, to meet the compliance of, uh, that, uh, that there is regarding anti-money laundering, etc. And um, I think uh, this will be the biggest challenge for Liquid, but uh, with, with the knowledge we have, the expertise, we are very well placed to, to go to this next level. And also, you know, I'm always thinking about what is my vision for, for liquid long term. So my dream is that really, um, for example, small and medium enterprise can log in in liquid. It looks like a, a banking or e-banking interface, and then they can manage their treasury uh, on the blockchain. And this will also help to drive much more uh, adoption and also uh, bring a lot more of liquidity on our protocol. 
well. I think that oracles overall are going to see a rapid evolution on Cardano. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new ways of doing things that the, the Cardano uh, EUTXO and uh, the Plutus uh, uh, code base uh, allows. Uh, so I think that's going to be uh, groundbreaking in many ways. I expect that we'll be seeing new use cases for oracles. I expect that we will be seeing projects uh, find new ways to use oracles that might not be be possible on other blockchains, but uh, Cardano allows. So I think that that will be very exciting to see. I also think that Charlie is in a unique position to kind of uh, drive this this evolution, uh, being that we will be integrating with and partnering with many projects and helping them out, and they will be. Uh, letting us know what their pain points are and how we can uh, serve them better. And of course, we will be adapting to, to basically be a better building block for, uh, for the ecosystem uh, as a whole. I think we often talk about in, in all technology, not just blockchain, but first mover advantage. Uh, but I don't think that's necessarily true. We've now got a lead time of a couple of years to really dig deep and examine what was done well on Ethereum and other blockchains, uh, DeFi ecosystems, and what wasn't done so well. So we spoke a little bit about gas, um, but there's also been other problems like smart contract vulnerabilities. Um, and I think for Cardano, you know, we'll see similar products that we do on on Ethereum, like your Aves or um, Celsius, that sort of thing. Uh, but they can be built better from the beginning. So we can take of all of these problems that Ethereum DeFi had, you know, high gas uh, exploits, and we can rectify them and then build a robust DeFi ecosystem from the beginning on Cardano. So we've got that real opportunity now to do things right. Um, and in terms of Occam and what role we're going to play in that, so we have the Accelerator program. Now, the Accelerator program is an incubator of Cardano native projects. Um, and we're helping these projects build from scratch. So if you've got an idea, you can build from scratch. Uh, and we take you all the way through to a successful launch. So it's like building the Lego blocks of DeFi, but on uh, Cardano and making sure that it's got a robust foundation. Um, we can help with that. And we think that's going to be one of the most important phases of Cardano's growth. Currently, there are two financial worlds. We have uh, traditional finance, which is opaque uh, and weighted in the favor of big banks and the uh, 1%. And then we have DeFi 1.0, which is inefficient and limited in terms of what we can do. So where we see Maladex protocol is the DeFi 2.0 category, which aims to solve challenges from the both above worlds. Uh, DeFi 2.0 can bring a lot of innovations, uh, innovative solutions in how people invest. And we plan uh, to increase uh, the efficiency of the financial markets and the transparency. And DeFi 2.0 is about smart investing, focused on research data and sound investment tools, but decentralized with the middlemen and their fees. And most important of all, we will continue building on our mission to rewrite the code, powering the financial systems to make it fair and efficient for everyone. And, uh, you know, uh, I want to thank all people that have been sharing and supporting us along the way. Uh, we really appreciate, you know, like everybody in our community. Uh, there is like Twitter, Discord, DMs, very friendly words, and everybody who is supporting the project directly by uh, delegating to our pools. Amazing. What a great set of projects. Uh, I, for one, am really excited to see all of them launch um, in the next few months. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, at the Cardano 360 show and good luck.